Hello, this is Sarah Brosh. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. So I just wanted to do a quick impromptu video and I plan on doing more of these because I like the way they turned out the, or the one that I did or the two that I did that turned out. So there's a lot to talk about. A lot of things have been happening that I wanted to address. And first of all, I just wanted to thank everyone who's been watching and enjoying the Cherry Kool-Aid eyeshadow makeup application video for Swamp Twats and Michael Harriet of The of the Root. So I'm glad that everyone's been enjoying that. That was really fun to make. And I think I'm going to do more humorous types of videos um, because people seem to enjoy those and they seem to be effective as well. So I'm gonna do that. And I just wanted to ask everyone again to donate to my legal fund and I'll put my PayPal me and GoFundMe links below. And I am in need of more donations to my legal fund. Uh, the brief and reply brief um, for the Connecticut Freedom of Information at Commission are due on in the mid-January. And I'm getting close to the $5,000 retainer that I paid that was put to very good use, was your donations put to very good use. So thank you so much for that. And so um, that's why I need to ask for more donations to my legal fund. And of course, even after I get, I, ha I have every hope that I will get the Yale police body camera footage. Um, and But even after I get that, I do still intend to pursue all appropriate uh, litigation against Yale and the entire moral outrage industry who destroyed my life and lifelong human and civil rights career. So I will continue to need donations to my legal fund for that. And I am planning on completing my book proposal very soon. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping to be able to get an advance from my book proposal, which I will use to secure my legal re representation to pursue additional litigation um, against Yale and the moral outrage industry. But I also wanted to talk a little bit about a few things. One, uh, Yale President Peter Salovey released an absolutely farcical and ridiculous statement in which he dedicated an additional $85 million to their, his faculty diversity initiative. And there's nothing wrong with the faculty diversity initiative, but uh, obviously this is infuriating to me because the reason why the Yale administration tried to expel me twice now is because they considered to me, me to be unwoke because I stood up in the spring of 2015 for the religious expression rights of an evangelical black man who was our only person of color job candidate for an assistant professor position in the philosophy department at Yale, a tenure track position. So if Yale President Peter Salovey cares about diversity amongst the faculty, then probably the Yale administration should not have tried to expel me for standing up for the federal civil rights of an evangelical black man at Yale who was our only person of color job candidate for a tenure track assistant professor position in the philosophy department in spring 2015. Also, uh, the Yale administration didn't just try to expel me for having been a civil libertarian who defended this gentleman's federal civil rights once but twice because this was the reason why the Yale administration demanded that I participate in their Maoist struggle sessions after I was falsely accused of having perpetrated a hate crime analogous to a lynching by Lolata Siambola in spring of 2018, and because I refused to participate in their Maoist struggle sessions as punishment and the reason why they wanted to publicly brand me a racist, the reason why they were so thrilled that Lolata Siambola had approached them 
accusing me falsely of having perpetrated a hate crime analogous to a lynching. The reason why the Yale administration embraced this and were, th were thrilled and receptive to her false accusation is because they were salivating to get a second bite at the expulsion apple. They were thrilled to have another chance to try to expel me for what occurred in spring 2015 when I stood up for the federal civil rights of an evangelical black man and I was socially ousted by the philosophy graduate students of the philosophy department. And it was incredibly traumatic and painful. And this is the reason why I also have a mental health history at Yale was because of that incident that occurred in spring of 2015. So if Yale President Peter Salovey is so concerned about faculty diversity, then maybe he and the rest of the administrators at Yale shouldn't be trying to expel graduate students who stand up for the federal civil rights of the only person of color job candidate for an assistant professor tenure track position in the philosophy department. That's all I'm saying. So beyond that, he also, in his ridiculous and farcical statement, spoke about how he's doing the utmost to attract and, retra and retain the very brightest scholars from around the world working on the world's most dire problems. Well, I am one of the very brightest scholars from around the world working on the world's most dire problems, and Yale President Peter Salovey didn't have any interest in trying to retain me. In fact, he told disgusting lies about me and destroyed my life and endangered my life and almost drove me to suicide and destroyed my lifelong human and civil rights academic and legal, legal careers. So I don't know how concerned he can be with attracting and retaining the brightest scholars from around the world working on the world's most dire problems when he ousted me along with the other Yale administrators from Yale. I was actually banned from Yale's campus and banned from teaching at Yale. And I'm almost done with my Saving the World project. And if you think that the fact that I was almost done with my Saving World, the World project, which is an analysis of how to minimize the oppression inherent to our most powerful social institutions. And if you think that had nothing to do with the fact that the Yale administration tried to expel me, destroy me, destroy my life, oust me from Yale, then you simply aren't paying attention. So something else that happened, um, the on Monday, the Yale Graduate School held an absolutely farcical diversity town hall. I have all, I had prepared a statement in response and I have heard absolutely nothing from Yale or the Yale Daily News since Monday when this farcical di diversity town hall led by the racist liars, graduate school Dean Lynn Cooley and graduate school diversity Dean Michelle Niren uh, took place allegedly on Monday, but I heard absolutely nothing about what occurred or if there was actually a Yale graduate student who still cares about civil liberties uh, at Yale and cares about due process and free speech who was willing to read the statement as I asked. I have no idea what happened. So beyond that, I wanted to talk about how I saw that Ijeoma Oluo tweeted that she does not think that cancel culture exists. She thinks it's a myth and she thinks people should stop whining about cancel culture and she thinks that powerful people who cause harm to marginalized persons, including by cyberbullying them on Twitter into suicide, including persons with mental health disabilities, that those persons should accept responsibility for their behavior and they should apologize. Well, this is interesting because, of course, Ijeoma Oluo was one of the leaders of the global defamation campaign, which almost got me killed. Uh, she actually put a call out on her Twitter for me to be stalked and harassed in my home, my dorm room, my isolated dorm room on Yale's campus, 
which forced me to flee, which was one of the reasons that I had to flee and immediately go into hiding. And I actually had to flee Yale's campus for my life while being taunted by a mom. So she did that. Um, she continues to this day to defame me, say, tell disgusting lies about me. She told disgusting lies about me when she accepted her ridiculous and farcical Feminist of the Year Award from the American Humanist Association in spring of 2018. She told disgusting lies about what are actually my anti-oppression essays that I wrote a decade ago, including for the American Humanist Association, and um, basically helped to destroy my life as well as help to destroy the Living Well Black movement and help to undermine the black social justice movement in the US. But apparently, and this is all documented, all very well documented, but apparently even though she was one of the leaders of cancel culture, one of the leaders of the global defamation campaign that almost got me killed, uh, cancel con culture does not exist, according to her, um, and she is someone with an extraordinary amount of power relative to myself, and I'm definitely a marginalized person relative to her. And I have yet to receive an apology from Ijeoma Oluo. So that was something else fun that happened. And then beyond that, I literally, my head spun, probably around on my neck, uh, when I saw that the American Humanist Association, and in particular Jennifer Barty, the editor of the Humanist magazine of the American Humanist Association, gave an award and interviewed Salman Rushdie. And in the interview, Jennifer Barty had the nerve to speak with Salman Rushdie about the problem of persons extracting a mere word or two from a larger context of a piece and then using that to condemn the author uh, and how we can get people to stop doing that and get people to read the entire piece and to understand the context and to stop cherry picking and grossly and willfully misconstruing single word choices, save from decade old anti-oppression essays that someone like myself had written for the American Humanist Association, for the Humanist Magazine, for Jennifer Barty, which she edited. So the fact that they, she did that, and the fact that they even gave the award to Salman Rushdie, who of course, is the author of the Satanic Verses, who of course is the brilliant novelist who had to go into hiding for years and years because of a fatwa against him, because he is the author of the Satanic Verses. And then Jennifer Barty had the nerve to interview him. The American Humanist Association had the nerve to honor him and to give him the Humanist of the Year Award after they had pulled what are indubitably my anti-oppression essays, which are not racist in any way, shape, or form. They censored me, they pulled it from their websites, they apologized for it, they smeared me, they defamed me, they helped destroy my life, destroy my lifelong human and civil rights career by telling disgusting lies about me and treating what are undoubtedly my anti-oppression essays as taboo, as something that's too taboo, too obscene for free thinkers, for enlightened free thinkers who venerate enlightenment values to read for themselves and to decide for themselves. They, it's too dangerous. My anti-oppression essays from a decade ago are too dangerous for free thinkers to read and so they had to be pulled from the American Humanist Association's website and then they have the gall they have the nerve, they have the temerity to honor Salman Rushdie with the Humanist of the Year Award and to talk to him about the problem of censorship, about the problem of cherry picking single words from a larger context and using that to condemn an author wrongfully. And I think, yeah, I feel a little bit like 
uh, I was trying to express the emotions that I felt when I found this out and when I saw that this had occurred. And I said, it feels a little bit like I'm living inside of a surrealist Dadaist painting, one of those paintings where the clocks are melting off the sides of tables. I just feel a little bit like I live in the twilight zone and I'm still a little in shock. And I just think to myself, this can't actually be happening, right? This isn't actually happening. These people, these lying liars who lie, who don't care if they destroy an innocent civil rights activist's life, they have to know that they're lying, right? They have to know, actually know that they're lying, that every single word that they say is a lie and everyone knows they're lying. And I just, I think this is the problem with woke intersectional feminism. Their ideologies and their careers depend upon the fact that I can't actually be vindicated. I, I have to be the racist whom they claimed I was and that I am. Because woke intersectional feminism, one of the foundational premises is that there are never false accusations of racism by a person of color against a white person. That cannot happen. Um, because one of the foundational premises of woke intersectional feminism is that if a black person or a person of color understands a situation as racist, then it is racist. And so that's why they are waging a war against due process. And any demand for due process, any attempt to defend oneself is just further evidence of your racism because you are simply maintaining and supporting the status quo system of oppression. So uh, needless to say, it's been an interesting last day or two. Um, and I'm just trying to stay calm and I'm trying to stay brave and I'm trying to stay strong. And I just need to remind myself that light and truth and justice will prevail in the end. And I still believe that. And I just have to remind myself that even though these really insane things are happening, I'm still in a place that is a million times better than I was even a few months ago. I love you all so much for your support and your kind words and your donations. Please donate to my legal fund. And also I have to remind myself that I truly do believe that I'm on a God-given and God-guided path and that I'm being guided by my guardian angels, especially my beautiful red-haired guardian angel brothers, Aaron, James, and Jacob, Michael. And I just have to remind myself that this isn't just about me. It's not just about me getting back some semblance of my life. This is about everyone who has been falsely accused and denied due process. This is about restoring civil liberties on college campuses, including at Yale. This is about bolstering our democratic institutions that guarantee the civil liberties of one and all. This is about stopping the moral outrage industry so that they cannot destroy one more innocent life and career. And so I have to stay strong and I have to keep fighting. I will never stop fighting for justice for me and for all of us. And I love you all so much for your support and your kind words and your donations. Thank you from the bottom of my, of my heart. And I will include my PayPal me and GoFundMe links below. Okay, you have a great night. Thank you. Bye-bye.